Welcome back YouTube, I am Turnkey, your host. In this video, I will cover the lore for the Middle East and Persian front from the Conflict 47 rulebook and its supplement resurgence, and in the following video, I will cover the Far East and Asia. Please like and subscribe for more Conflict 47 lore. By 1944, British Commonwealth forces occupy Iraq and Iran, securing vital oil fields and maintaining logistical supply routes to facilitate lend-lease to the Soviets. As the Soviet Union declares war on the Allies in May 1944, a new front opens in Iraq with the Soviets threatening vital oil supplies. Both forces consist of non-frontline units now working to stabilize a frontline or push for advantage. By September, modern armor is deployed to the region, and massed tank battles erupt in October, with Shermans having considerable trouble with the T-34. A stalemate is maintained between November and March of 1945, as neither side is willing to commit to losses, as resupply is not guaranteed. The Soviets make the first push, launching a spring offensive that forces the Commonwealth back forming a line from Tehran to Bundar. The offensive is halted when U.S. Tesla-armed Shermans and heavy infantry enter the fight. Again, a stalemate is reached. Seeing aggressive Soviet expansion and lackluster Allied response left Turkey feeling uneasy about its position. They appealed to the Germans for help and received military advisors and promises of rift tech. Turkey then worked to blockade the Soviet access to the Mediterranean Sea. A military buildup of high-tech Soviet forces in Iran forces the Allies to divert more resources away from the Pacific campaign to match Soviet rift tech. Soviet progress is hindered by Turkish border skirmishes and Allied bombing campaigns. The Soviets finally launch their offensive in April and slowly crush the Allied lines. The air support keeps the retreat from becoming a rout, and masterful tactics by the retreating forces cause heavy losses during the Soviet victories. The momentum slows and the Soviets dig in and fortify their new holdings. The Allies are more than content to reinforce their positions, which still occupy strategic oil fields. Continued Turkish border conflicts lead to Soviet advances into Turkish territory, claiming key fuel and ammunition stockpiles. In response, Turkey deploys new German armor, including Panzermechs, to retake captured territory. The onset of the harsh winter of 46 through 47 allows Turkey time to equip their forces with the latest in German rift tech while the Allies and Soviets dig in. The crippling winter in Europe makes supply lines to the Middle East unreliable. The Soviets use alternative supply lines to fortify their positions in Iran, effectively projecting force towards Turkey. Soviet forces stream into central and southern Iran as the winter resides and supply lines open up. Turkey continues to modernize their armed forces with the help of Germany. German aircraft become a staple of the Turkish military, but the lack of armored vehicles is seen as an issue by the Germans. The Turks prefer a mobile infantry force as many of their fighters are used to the mountainous regions. Soviet politicians demand that Turkey force the Germans to withdraw and join the Soviet war effort. Turkish forces openly clash with Soviet forces, but neither side commits to sustained offensives. U.S. forces are folded into British command in Cairo. With many active theaters of war, the U.S. and British militaries lack the will and equipment to begin new offensives, instead watching the Soviets build up in Iran. By April, it is clear that the situation is perilous on the Soviet Commonwealth front lines. The RAF and U.S. fighter patrols impose air superiority, but are met with increased military activity on the ground. Small-scale engagements plague the front lines. Commonwealth forces have little hope of reinforcement and are therefore unwilling to sustain casualties. British, Indian, and African forces are diverted from the Far East theater, as the U.S. likewise diverts supplies destined for China. The feared offensives never manifest, as Soviets stockpile more supplies. Command fears a far larger offensive, and intelligence worked tirelessly to gleam the Soviets' intentions. The Soviet Navy in the Black Sea works to pressure Turkey, however German U-boats infiltrate the waters, inflaming the situation. 
the Soviet intentions are clear as they build up forces near Turkey. Turkey is the first to strike, using artillery to shell Soviet staging points. Soviet forces cross the border near Riaz as hostilities escalate along the border. Forces to the south meet with less success as stubborn defense slow their advances. The front becomes a war of artillery as German advisors support the Turks, providing panzer mechs and armored vehicles to the mobile Turkish forces. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time as I cover the Far East and Asia. Please comment below with suggestions for future videos.